What's going on guys? Jeff here for Mad Hatter's Reef and today we're going to take a look at the top 10 Mad Hatter Reef videos for 2019. Welcome back to a, another episode of Mad Hatter's Reef. This is where we talk about everything reef tank related. So if you love reef tanks like I do, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell so you can be notified every time that I upload a new video. Out with the old, in with the new. We are approaching 2020. That just sounds crazy to say that out loud. Now this year has been filled with a ton of reef tank videos here from Mad Hatter's Reef and I wanted to put together a video that is going to take a look at each of them, kind of a year-end review of Mad Hatter Reef videos. So without further ado, let's jump into our top 10 Mad Hatter Reef videos for 2019. All right, guys, we're kicking it off with number 10 on the best of Mad Hatter's Reef 2019. And we're starting with one of the very first videos of the year. And that was when we took a look at salinity and specific gravity. And we dedicated an entire video to it. So without further ado, let's take a look at our salinity video, which is coming in at number 10. Specific gravity. Now, specific gravity is defined as the ratio of the density of a substance to the density of a standard, usually water for a liquid or solid and air for a gas. Huh? And to make specific gravity a little bit more confusing, the density of the liquid, which is water, because that's what we're measuring when we're measuring the specific gravity of a saltwater aquarium, will change with the temperature of the water. Because water, when it's warm, it expands. When water is cool, it contracts. So the density of that liquid is going to change with the temperature. So that is a quick look at our salinity video that we put together. And I think it was a really good video that I put a lot of time and effort into, especially into the research part of it. And if you want to check that video out, there's going to be links in the description. Actually, there's going to be links to every video in this top 10. I'm also going to put a playlist together for you if you want to check that out. But there's going to be links and all that stuff down in the description below if you want to dive a little bit deeper into each video that we talk about in this top 10. Coming in at number nine was one of the very few top 10s that actually made it to this top 10. And that's when we took a look at gobies. So let's listen the in. Carnivore, considered reef safe, grows upwards of two inches and requires a minimum tank size of 10 gallons. A few fun facts about the neon goby. They are often tank raised, which is also a great feature about this fish, commonly breeding in fish tanks and also has been known to remove parasites from their tank mates. So this is a great addition to any reef tank. I don't know what take raise means, but it sounds like a good time. Nobody's perfect folks, but this top 10 was actually a request from a subscriber. When I was at reef of Palooza, they asked me to put together a video on gobies and I did just that. And it was a very successful top 10 for the 2019 year, and that's why it's included on our top 10 best of Mad Hatter's Reef. Coming in at number eight on our top 10 list of the best of Mad Hatter's Reef is when we started the water box build. Now, this whole build has been documented in great detail, and I do have an entire playlist, so if you want to check out this build, if you're new to the channel and haven't seen it yet, this is definitely one that you're going to want to jump into. And I go into probably the best detail that I have as of yet when it comes to putting together a reef tank. So it's a lot of information in this series, and it started with this very episode, which was towards the beginning of the 2019 year. You have filter slots in the back corner, then you have your plumbing in the middle, and the water goes in the back corners through the filter socks down and up over into this middle chamber this middle chamber is for your return pipe as well as your pipe that's leading to your sump then it filters into the back of the sump comes up through a baffle this section of the sump right here is for your protein skimmer 
or if you're going to do a refugium, however you're going to go about extracting nutrients from your aquarium, that's what this section is right here. Then it goes under this baffle, up through this floss that you have here, and then into your return pump section. Then it gets pumped back up into this section and out these return pipes. So this is an auto top off reservoir, which I'm both excited about and a little bit nervous about. I'm nervous because it's actually in the sump um, and it's going to have to prove itself reliable before I really start using it. Coming in at number seven on our top 10 best of Mad Hatter's Reef 2019 is when we went to the Dallas World Aquarium. Now, if you guys were around or not during the early part of 2019, I made the trip down to Dallas for Aquashella. Now, on one of the mornings before going over to the Aquashella event, I made the trip over to the Dallas World Aquarium, and it was very, very awesome. I was overwhelmed, and I wish I brought my kids with me because it was a really cool place to hang out for a bit. Now, out of all the exhibits that I saw at the Dallas World Aquarium, the one that caught my eye the most was this cuttlefish exhibit, and it was just absolutely stunning. I almost missed it, walked by it once, and on the second go-around, noticed this very dimly lit tank, and noticed the cuttlefish swimming around and walking around. Absolutely gorgeous. It was a great time. If you want to check this video out, it's probably the longest video that I put together in 2019. It's almost 40 minutes long, and it just is a great walkthrough. Definitely enjoyed my time at the Dallas World Aquarium. Coming in at number six on the best of Mad Hatter's Reef 2019 is our trip to Reefa Palooza. Now, the interesting thing about Reefa Palooza Orlando was this was the very first time that I had my own booth at a show, and it was a lot to take in, a lot to learn, and definitely look forward to future events such as Reefa Palooza Orlando. Definitely a fun video, and it was a great time down in Orlando. Enjoyed myself, and it was a great experience overall. Definitely learned a lot. Coming in at number five on our top ten best of Mad Hatter's Reef 2019 is when we got to take a first look at the Air Aqua Duo from Max Beck. This is an absolute beast of a protein skimmer, and I was very honored to be able to be one of the first people in the United States to actually take a look at at it's this protein fish, skimmer coral and you're trying to keep it as clean as possible the overall height on this protein skimmer is over 22 inches so it's a fairly tall protein skimmer and that is something that you're going to have to take into consideration if this is a protein skimmer that you're looking at for your system now rounding the horses back to the float switch and the ability to shut this protein skimmer down so this is a dc powered protein skimmer so that gives you controllability over the pump now adding a float switch to the controller it has the ability to once that collection cup fills up it is going to shut off the pumps and it's going to stop working until somebody comes and takes care of the liquid in the collection cup and as far as installing like you saw just there very very easy to install 
Something that was very impressive. Definitely love me some Air Aqua Duo. This protein skimmer is still running on the water box, and I will be doing a follow-up video on this protein skimmer in 2020. Coming in at number four on our top ten best of Mad Hatter's Reef is the cable management video that I put together, and this is where I come to terms with the fact that I am awful at cable management and do my very best to take my tank and make it look a whole lot better cable management videos to kind of prep for this and ultimately they didn't really show me a whole lot really all they did was just show you neat ways of making the cables look not so bad when i got into this i originally wanted to take all of the bricks and put them into an ammo box then a few days ago i was watching some of jake adams videos and i noticed on one of his builds that he was using a shelf it looked like it was attached with screws. I don't want to screw anything in this stand, but it was a good idea. So I ended up running over to Walmart and found a shelf or a, I guess, a caddy that goes into a shower. And I thought that that was going to be my answer. Went to the store, bought it, picked it up, brought it home, and started placing it in different spots within the stand. And it just didn't feel right. Coming in at number three on the best of Mad Hatter's Reef 2019 is my trip to Aquashella. This was probably one of the best conventions that I made it to in 2019, and it was an extremely entertaining and educational event that I recommend everybody check out if they have the opportunity. Coming in at number two, one of the top 10 best of Mad Hatter's Reef 2019 is the top 10 biggest reef tank mistakes. Now, this whole entire video was dedicated to the mistakes that one can make when keeping a reef tank. And the whole idea of what we're doing here at Mad Hatter's Reef is helping people be successful with their reef tanks. And this was probably one of the most successful videos of 2019 about the requirements of those corals fish and invertebrates and i truly believe that that has been the secret sauce to a lot of the success that has been with the advancements in saltwater aquariums educating yourself on the livestock in which you want to keep which you plan on keeping is king when it comes to being successful with your reef tank and rounding out the best of Mad Hatter's Reef 2019 is the top 10 saltwater fish that reef tank hobbyists should avoid. Now, this whole video was dedicated to saltwater fish that you shouldn't keep. And that may seem like a weird subject to talk about, especially when you're promoting the hobby. But that is exactly what the idea behind this video is, is to educate people and steer them away from fish that potentially could cause problems in their reef tank. Tricky dynamic in your reef tank because most of us that keep saltwater aquariums like to keep sbs corals but if you are interested in keeping a orange spotted file fish you need to be able to figure out and plan for to be able to feed this fish and not only that but have a sustainable food source for this fish because it'd get pretty expensive if you were just going to the store and buying even the cheapest sbs coral and bringing it back to the fish and letting it chew it up and then just constantly repeating that process that aside this is probably one of the coolest looking file fish that i have ever seen and i think it would be pretty interesting to have in a reef tank i'm just not willing to sacrifice my sbs corals all right guys that's gonna do it for today's 
video i want to thank you for joining me if you're new to the channel again don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell so you can be notified every time that i upload a new video thank you so much for joining me today and if you enjoyed this one make sure you hit the thumbs up and i will see you in 2020